In this video, we'd like to prove the following theorem. It says that a path integral, a path integral, integral c f dot dr, is independent of path, independent of path in a domain D, if and only if this path integral f dot dr is equal to zero along every closed path. So I was going to write four, but let's say along every closed path C that's contained in D. All right, so this is what we want to try to prove for, for this, uh, this video. Um, we should start, of course, by reviewing the definition of independence of path and a, a so let's just write this down, definition. This is called an axiom in our theorem. So whenever you use a definition as part of a theorem, you have to remember what that definition means. Um, usually the definition is very important to actually proving the theorem. But the definition here is that a path integral um, is independent of path. I won't write all the words here. But in a path integral, f dot dr is independent of path. So IOP, I'll get really, really lazy here. Independent of path in D if and only if, so this is a definition, but it still comes with an if and only if, integral along c1, f dot dr, is equal to the integral along c2, f dot dr, for any paths, c1 and c2, that are contained in D and have the same initial and, term and, initial and terminal points. So, the paths go from A to B. And remember that we've drawn pictures of this, but the picture is that if we start at a point A, we want to integrate along a path that takes us to point B. The idea is that we could take this path, C1 or something like this path, or we could take something like this path. And if our, if our integral, our path integral is independent of path, then it says that no matter which one of these we take, or in reality, anything that we take in between here, right? Any path that we take will have the same integral um, along that path. So th this is what it means to be independent of path. And then th the other part of this theorem I think is self-explanatory. The integral f dot dr should be zero along every closed path. So closed means, of course, that there are no endpoints. So it might be like the boundary of this. And actually, uh, what we're gonna do to actually prove this theorem is invoke that idea of having a loop with some points in it, okay, some boundary, some some kind of uh, artificial boundary points. So let's get to the proof then. So let's say for our proof, I'm going to do one direction and then the other direction we'll do kind of by um, analogy. I won't write as much, but the first one, let's assume, so we have to prove two directions here. So let's suppose that our path integral f dot dr is independent of path in D. All right. And furthermore, let's suppose that we have a closed curve in D or a closed path in D. So let's suppose C, now let's call it a C hat just so it looks different than that C, is a closed path in D. And I'm going to draw this path. This path could be anything, right? This theorem has to apply to any or every, we might say, closed path, C hat, that's contained in D. Now, I haven't drawn the region D here, but the idea is that this path is in D, whatever D is. Um, and so, here's what we're, we're gonna do. So let's choose any two distinct points along this path. So choose any distinct points. And we're gonna want these to be distinct um, just for the sake of the argument I'm gonna make. But So distinct points, let's call them A and B on C hat. Okay, so I'll make these say green. Let's make this one be A and let's make the other one be red. I'll call this one B. And by the way, um, those can be anywhere on the path and distinct just means that they don't coincide. They're not the same. They're not the same exact point. And so now our C hat, our C bar here, can be broken down or, or maybe divided into two curves. We can call this orange portion C1. That goes from A to B. And then the other portion over here that continues along, this is the way I've drawn it, this is a longer portion, 
you might draw this so that it's they're, they're about the same length, but it doesn't really matter. This portion is C2. And so what we've done now is we've divided our path C into the sum of two paths. So the idea here is that if you go from A to B along C1, you pick up and take C2 all the way back, then you've completed one loop of the, of the curve C bar, the path C bar that we're interested in. Okay, and so by the properties of path integrals, then what we have is this is the integral, the integral along c hat of f dot dr. This is the integral of the closed path, right? This is equal to now the integral along c1 plus c2 f dot dr. So that's just rewriting what we just wrote here. But then the property of the path integral says that the path integrals are, the, are additive over paths. So this becomes c1 f dot dr, so there's our integral along the first, plus the integral along the second one, f dot dr. Okay, uh, let me scroll a little here so I have more room. Now all we want to do is work with this. So at this point, c1, so I'm just kind of gathering ideas here, c1 takes us from the point A to the point B. So the orientation of c1 was from A to B, right? But c2 goes from B back to A. So C2 travels from B back to A. And one of the other properties of path integrals that we can now invoke is that, all right, if we have a path that's kind of going backwards in, the sen in some sense, so this one goes from B to A, we want this to maybe to go from A to B. If we're gonna use the fact that our integral is independent of path, what this means then is we could rewrite this as minus C2. So the convention of minus, negative, what does that mean? Well, negative just means that you reverse the direction, right? Negative numbers go to the left of, of the origin as opposed to to the right. So our path as we go from, if we want to reverse it, we just call this the negative path, negative C2. And negative C2 is going to take us from A back to B. It's going to reverse. It's going to go this way, right? So that'll be negative C2. All right, so what we can do that, you can probably guess what, what's going to happen next, right? So the next thing that we do is we say, okay, we've got this sum. So we'll go back to our integral, integral along C bar. This is our integral along our closed path it is equal to the integral of along C1, f dot dr, plus this integral. But if I reverse the order, right, then this becomes a minus. So you have to, anytime you reverse an order, you have to make up for it by subtracting the integral. The integral sign will change as well. So this becomes minus uh, the integral along negative C2 of f dot dr. But now, since our, since our integral is assumed to be independent of path, these two integrals both are integrals of the same vector field along paths that start at the same point and end at the same point. So these two integrals have the same value, right? So, so but at this point, our integral along C1, f dot dr, is equal to the integral along minus C2, f dot dr, because, this is very important, right? This is because of our assumption. So because the integral C f dot dr is independent of path. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if they're equal to each other, then this difference is obviously zero, right? So what we've just shown then is, um, by the way, this curve was arbitrary, right? The C bar was ar arbitrary. So what we've shown then is if our path integral is assumed to be in independent of path, then the integral along every closed curve is always going to be zero. Okay, and this is for any or every closed curve curve or closed path C bar that's contained in D. All right, so that's the first half of this. So for this, we started with by assuming that our integral was independent of path, and then we drew a closed path, right? And we were able to show that the integral around the closed path is zero. The other side of the proof, so proof part two, we have to go in the other direction, right? So in this case, we have to assume that our path integral is equal to zero along every closed path. So along every closed C 
and of course again close the inner domain D so anytime you venture out of the domain that you've made your assumptions in all bets are off um, but we're not doing that right so uh, what we need to show now is that the path integral from any one point to another one does not depend on the path that you take right so what do we do so now we're gonna fix two points inside of D so let's let A and B be points in D this time I'm not going to write as much. I'm going to let you guys work out the details because I think the for the direction that we just did is going to kind of show you what to, what you should do here. But so anyway, we choose these two points, right? We want to show that the integral along C of f dot dr um, c1 c2 f dot so that these two integrals are equal for any two any two curves c1 and c2 connecting right connecting a to b this is our goal we want to show that this is true and so what do we do well we just pick a couple paths so c1 can be any path from a to b call this c1 and c2 can be any other path it could cross over that but I'm just for the sake of this drawing I'm not going to let it happen all right, but like I said, it could cross through. These don't have to be simple closed paths. They just have to be any closed path, right? They don't have to be simple. Simple would mean that they don't intersect. That, that's not one of our assumptions here. Um, it might be nice, but it's not one of our assumptions. So at this point, what do we see? Well, we want to compare these two integrals, right? So the integral C1, F dot dr. Um, this, again, we've got the same situation here, except now everything's reversed, right? Now both of the curves are going from A to B. So if I want to travel along uh, C1 first, right, and then reverse everything to get back to A, then I need to go along negative C2, F dot dr, right? And so this right here, integral C1 minus C2, F dot dr, this is the integral along a closed path. Um, and so this must be zero, right? So this equals zero by our assumption because C1 minus C2, call it C bar. C bar C1 minus C2 is the path that goes this way and then the minus C2 says, all right, go all the way back to A from there. So this is zero by our assumption, but let's look at the left-hand side a little more carefully and really all we're gonna do is make the same kind of uh, observation that we did in the last case which is if we swap out minus C2 for positive C2 it has to also if we do this it has to also change the sign in between here right and so in doing so what we end up with we already know that this sum is equal to 0 but what we end up with is that that 0 is equal to integral along C1 f dot dr minus the integral along C2 of f dot dr and of course, this implies that these two integrals are indeed equal. The values of these integrals are equal. And so our integral must be independent of path in D.